Okay. Just what every percussionist wants to hear is you're too loud. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, yes. We know about that. Bernard Herrmann loved him. Playing tip, I don't know if you know Bernard Herrmann, a great film composer and so on, who's had a very aggressive personality and style. And he loved my father's Tiffany playing. Why? Because he said, you have to get old man Williams, he's not afraid to break the head. <laughs> Way too loud. Old man Williams. Uh, I don't know any old man Williams. There are only young man Williams around here at the moment. Um, uh, so you, you trained as a classical pianist. You did quite a lot of performing. You evolved into other art forms. How did you train as a, in composition as well? And then used your experience working in the studio to really move to composing for film and television? Is that how it worked? I think, I think all of it is, is a part of my, my road, my trap, my, my journey. Um, when I was a youngster, I was studying piano, as you said, Deborah, very seriously. I, I, I went to Juilliard briefly and studied with Rosina Levine, and her audience, as you were younger, but you must remember Van Cliburn, who won every international prize, and he was a fellow student of mine. And whenever I saw Van, I would say, the reason I'm a composer is because I can never play the piano as well as you do, and that was the truth. So I blamed him for my... So we can thank him for what you have done for us. Blame him, why do you want to? Um, and I, because of my father's influence and, and, and people he knew, and I auditioned for conducted one particular year and, and played in orchestras as a result of all that. And I was a pretty good sight reader, so that, was, that helped. And still, I had no idea that I could have a career as a composer. How do you make money? If I, and I had a very young family now, and these days, middle 20s, I already had children. Um, and the, the journey that took me from the piano to composing for film was really a very simple thing where um, at least one of our music directors in the studio would say, John, can you orchestrate? Yes, with the temerity of you, of course I can. <laughs> and uh, can you orchestrate this for Tuesday morning, it's now Friday night, and it's how many pages, not many, 20 pages. And of course I could do it, so I did that, and that was a success, and the next week he would say, do more. So do more meant that I couldn't have time to play the piano. So very gradually through a process of evolution that hadn't been planned, I, I made a journey from the piano bench to the writer's bench. Both of them are strenuous for the back. <laughs> so I play some golf these days to sort of compensate. Oh, a strange positions of writing and so on. So I have to just say very general and summarize very quickly, my progress through instrumental work and so on and to composing and eventually conducting was, was totally an evolution, not planned. One point might be of interest. The first films I did, the music directors at the studio conducted the scores. That was the way business was done. So I would sit in a chair and listen to this person who I thought was an old timer who was probably 40 years old. <laughs> and, and thinking to myself, no, 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 bar three is too fast, or bar four is too loud, or what is this? We have too much flute, not enough bassoon. And uh, uh, so finally one day, one of them was ill and said, John, will you do the session on Friday? Yes, of course I would. <laughs> so I conducted the session. I thought it was wonderful. And so, uh, again, an, an unplanned evolution, which maybe the, in, in life maybe is a good way to do it. You, if you have such aspirations that you see in your mind, there may be a lot of disappointment along the way with hard knocks. With me, it's been constant encouragement and discovery and uh, experiences that I've been and remain enormously grateful for. And to go back to our friend music, which gives us everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by the comment about conducting as well. Um, because I've spoken to composers who are also conductors or conductors who are also composers. Notice that one comes before the other sometimes. And I know that sometimes there's this uh, tension between being a composer and a conductor because to compose you need the time and the focus and the, and the solitude. 